What's going on? It's Suck and I'm back with a brand new video on Super Duper Tech. And in today's video, I shall be showing you the results that I got when benchmarking the 2022 M2 powered MacBook Air. As always, the spec for the model that I am testing will be left down below in this video's description. And I will also be uploading a video very soon showcasing what it's like to play a handful of games on this particular machine. As always, the full spec for the model that I will be testing will be left down below in this video's description and I will soon be uploading a video showcasing what it was like to play a number of games on this machine along with reviewing it in depth. So if you do want to see those videos and you want to be one of the first 5,000 subscribers to the channel, then go ahead and hit the subscribe button, clicking the bell icon to be notified of when a new video goes live. Without any further ado, Let's hit the titles. The first few benchmarking applications which I threw at this MacBook Air were from Geekbench, the first of these being Geekbench 4. Now Geekbench runs a number of different tests on the machine and once these tests have been completed, it will then score the machine based on its time taken to complete these tasks. So on the CPU test here, I got a single core score of 6,671 and a multi-core score of 27,497. I then ran the compute test to see what it was like running the OpenGL test and for this I got an impressive score of 105,024 and when running the metal test I got a score of 90,196. I then ran the slightly newer set of tests found in Geekbench 5. Now starting off once again with the CPU test I got a single core score of 1,155 and a multi-core score of 6,912. And once again, running Geekbench 5's compute test, I got an OpenGL score of 21,440 and when running the metal compute test, I got a score of 24,491. And now running the latest version of Geekbench, Geekbench 6, Starting off once again with the CPU test, I got a single core score of 2,569 and a multi-core score of 9,882. And when running the Geekbench 6 compute test, I got an OpenGL score of 23,344 and when testing out using Metal, I got a score of 38,810. It's worth noting that a single core score of 2500 on Geekbench 6 is what we would expect to see from an equivalent 12th gen i7. So on the single core side of things, the MacBook Air is very capable and certainly is going to be good enough for all basic tasks. And even when throwing video editing at this machine, it's proved to be good enough. I then ran Cinebench R23. Now this test gave me a single core score of 1,587 and a multi-core score of 7,900, which does indeed give us a ratio of 4.98. Compared to the M1 Pro found in the 14-inch MacBook Pro, we can see that this MacBook Air, especially when it comes to the single core side of things, actually beats it, but it's a completely different story when we start looking at the multi-core side of things. With the MacBook Pro, with the M1 Pro chip, actually coming in with a ratio above six, which yeah, means it's, it's, it's faster on the multi-core side of things. The next application which I ran on this MacBook Air was Novabench. Now Novabench runs several different tests on all aspects of the machine from its memory, storage, CPU and GPU. Now this test yielded a result of 1834. I then tested the storage on this MacBook Air and was hopeful to see some improvements which were never seen. In fact, the MacBook Air this time around has overall worse performance when compared to the previous model. 
and certainly when compared to the MacBook Pros. Coming in with a write speed of 2370 megabytes per second and a read speed of 1479 megabytes per second, at least when compared to the M1 MacBook Air, which had a write speed above 2000 megabytes per second and a read speed above 2700 megabits per second. It's quite disappointing to see. And when strictly looking at its performance when writing to the SSD, we can see that there's over a 30% decrease in speed. I then wanted to test how well this machine would perform graphically, so I fired up GFX Bench Metal. So as always, I will be calculating the average for both the higher and lower level intensive tasks, while I will be showing you each individual result. So the average that I got for the higher intensive task was 193 frames per second, Whereas for the lower, I got a to be expected higher score of 223 frames per second. So sticking with testing the GPU portion of the M2, I then decided to run a number of different graphics tests from 3 Mark. So starting off with the wildlife test, which was useless, as the MacBook Air maxed out this test, with it clocking 60 frames per second and not even being able to get a score. So I then thought I'd run the wildlife stress test and the best and lower score that I got were exactly the same at 10,200, which is great. And it shows even with a fanless design that when doing light editing tasks on this machine, that it most likely will not throttle. I then ran the wildlife extreme test and got a score of 5,677 and an average FPS of 34 which while not as impressive as the MacBook Pro, it certainly wasn't bad considering the fanless design. While running the Wildlife Extreme Stress Test, the best score that this MacBook Air achieved was 5,685, whilst the lowest it achieved was 5,160, which is a decrease in performance of around 9%, which wasn't too bad, especially after 20 runs, on what is once again a fanless design. Sticking with the GPU or graphics tests, I chose to run the Valley and Heaven tests from Unigen Benchmarking Tools. While running Heaven, I got an average frame rate of 95 and a score of 2392. And we can see that there's a steady increase here as the M1 powered MacBook Air got a score of 2021 with an average frame rate of 80.2 frames per second. And whilst running the Valley test, I got a score of 3,463 and an FPS or average frame rate of 82.8 frames per second. Which once again, when compared to the M1 MacBook Air with its score of 2,955 and its average frame rate of 70, certainly shows an improvement. Whether it warrants an upgrade, mm, I really, really strongly doubt that. But it's good to see an improvement nevertheless, considering that the M2 is still being made on a 5 nanometer process. I then ran another graphics benchmark, this time Shadow of the Tomb Raider. And while running this benchmark at 2560 by 1600, it managed to render 3901 frames with an average frames per second or FPS of 25, which I don't think is too bad all things considered I guess. And when the resolution of this benchmark was lowered down to 1920 by 1200, it managed to render out 6,005 frames with an average FPS of 38 frames per second. I also ran the V-Ray test and for those who are wondering, I got a score of 5,413. So take that for what it's worth. Hey, if you've made it this far in the video, then be sure to hit that subscribe button and click that bell to be notified because there are a lot, and I mean a lot, of videos to come. So once again, sticking with the whole using the GPU, yeah, well, and a bit of the CPU, when running Blender on this MacBook Air to render the classroom scene using the CPU, it actually took 13 minutes and 57 seconds to complete, so pretty much 14 minutes to complete this render. Now, whilst using the GPU, it slashed that time completely, taking under five minutes, coming in at four minutes and 43 seconds to complete. 
and when using the CPU to render out the BMW scene, it took 6 minutes and 1 second to complete, which is quite interesting as the M1 Pro actually took 5 minutes and 30 seconds to complete that particular render using its CPU. So it's not really too far off in that regards. And finally, when using the GPU on this M2 MacBook Air, it took 2 minutes and 4 seconds to complete the render while the M1 Pro took 1 minute and 31 seconds to complete. So when comparing it to the M1 MacBook Air along with the entry M1 Pro MacBook Pro, it's, uh, it's clear to see that it, it kind of sits in that sweet spot between the two machines. I then did a timed Final Cut Pro export with background rendering turned off, exporting a 5 minute 23 second video file to H.264. And what I did was export this file as a full HD project, which took 47 seconds to complete. And when exporting it as a 4K project, it took 2 minutes and 55 seconds to complete. I then did a network speed test and got a download speed of 438 megabits per second and an upload speed of 87.3 megabits per second. I then ran the Antutu HTML benchmark and got a score of 73,584, which wasn't too bad, I guess. And when running the speedometer HTML test, I got a score of 427. So there you have it. That was my benchmarking video on the entry M2 powered MacBook Air. If there is any test that you'd like to see completed on this MacBook Air, then be sure to leave a comment down below. If you want to see what it's like throwing a few games at this machine, along with seeing what the differences are between this and the Mac spec model, then be sure to subscribe clicking the bell icon to be notified when these videos go live. If you have made it this far, then make sure you like the video because how this is a long video and uh, yeah, it like, why not? Why not? Does, does me a bit, a bit of help, helps me out a bit, helps me out a bit. Come on, help, help a brother out. And cool. Thank you very much for watching once again. I'll catch you in the next video. Take care and have a good one.